Okay. Some of you may know for a while I've been recommending the bimetal heat break for the Creality Hot End. And Luke kind of told me maybe I should put the brakes on that for a little bit. He said some people are having trouble adapting to it. So I was like, well, I've had so much success with it, I can't understand how that's possible. So let's just totally make a mess of everything and see if we can make it not work. So that's pretty much what we did. Super quick preview. I've been using this with this cover, high static cover. And actually, we noticed that the amp draw on this fan is lower than the one that's actually on the under three. But I used this for a year. It's the non-tapered version, but I had it wrapped. Never had a problem with it. Worked great. Used 0 0.4, 0 0.8. Had great results. This case right here was printed with some GST 3D, some of the worst filament you can get. With a one millimeter nozzle with the bimetal heat break. Um, only the big parts of the case. This was probably a 0.4 in a different machine. And I'm not sure about the covers, but the cases themselves. And they're good. They were decent on the metal heat break, bimetal heat break. I'll cut right to the chase. To make this thing work, you have to cool your heat sink. You have to make sure you have good airflow over your heat sink and you need to print at lower temperatures. This is at least 10 degrees lower than what I normally print eSun PLA Plus at. Retraction settings were actually pretty forgiving, but on this right here, for some reason, 2.5 all day long. So some people say they're at one. It was very forgiving though. I actually ran a heat tower with that had preset 6.5 retraction and it struggled, but it kept chugging. I could hear it struggling. It would want to hang up here and there, but for the most part, very forgiven on the retraction. You probably can go anywhere from two, probably 3.5. I don't think you'd have any trouble. The speed, 45 was uh, the standard. So these are pretty much the settings that I had for the micro Swiss. Now, one way we were able to trip ourselves up is having our acceleration. We turned up our acceleration and our retraction. And that made a pretty significant difference, probably because it was stretching or stretching the filament or causing the retraction to happen higher in the hot end. Retraction acceleration is set at 500 on this machine. The other problem we had is the old hot end cover. You hear how fast that's spinning. It's chugging right along. The old cover wasn't anywhere near as fast. I had a little swirl on here that you could kind of see how fast it was going. And I noticed as I started carving out the inside of this cover, I noticed the fan picking up speed. It's a lot faster now. That did not like that high static on the other cover. Um, so with, before when I had the old cover, before I altered this and got the good airflow across the heat sink, I was having to print at a very low temperature. Like I could print all the way down to like 180. And what that tells me is that my filament was being preheated. So. I don't know if I said 280 or 180, but 180. Um, so heat sink cooling, got to have it. Good airflow. I'll put this cover out there. I need to kind of... The front is not flush with the fan because we tilted the fan back. We need to fix that before we put it out. So your tip temperature, um, best I can tell, you're going to be about 10 degrees lower. Um, this is the first time I ever got really any string out of these links. I mean, super minor, not even anything to worry about. Um, got warm in the shop today. I didn't have the AC on. So I'm thinking a couple of degrees down and I'll be back to making the other ones. But these are, these links are no joke. Um, let me zoom in here. These are really, 
nice links. Mm, extremely nice. So one way to tell a good link is how it builds from the bottom. If you're not dialed in good, then right here oh, how it builds. Excuse my hands are a little dirty. I was uh, placed a reverse and valve on a uh, me and Damien I placed a reverse and valve on a big old 15 ton train machine today. I was kind of teaching them some tricks. Um, but yeah, links. These links are uh, very nice. So wrap your heat block. That's what I recommend to do. Buy the cotton, wrap it. I think I have a video of how to do it. And I recently kind of did a recap of doing it while it's in place. I don't remember if I posted it. Or take one of your silicone socks and cut you out a little divider. I think I showed a one that had the two holes for the screws cut. Make your divider and jam that between your heat sink and your heat block. And that'll make a big difference right there but wrap it so if you run into any problems if you have trouble it's no doubt it's going to be it's too hot you're not cooling your heat sink or you're just printing too hot because other than having the acceleration turned up too high the one time and it doesn't like that's another thing i should really stress it does not like slightly damp filament so what happens is with the, I think this is what happens with the preheating that we're getting more expansion um, before we get actually to our nozzle. And then with, I could never get, here's how much testing I did. This is the testing I did with the blue filament. And I finally figured out that this, fil this filament has just been sitting out in the open for a year at least. It's East Sun PLA Plus. We're not climate controlled. Um, we're in Florida, or we are climate semi-climate controlled. Um, we're in Florida, but I got slight string off these, even though they're also beautiful and strong and very clean, but they were very stringy. And the stringing, as soon as I switched filaments, the stringing went away. So I'll print another one, but yeah, there was no string. This one that I just printed. That is the first little bit of string I've seen on any of the last three or four lengths. Um, but it's super minor and it's right down by the bed. And when I start out, I have the bed at a higher temperature. Um, so I actually think I did turn this. Wow, this is very strong on the side. Wow, that is a super strong, even for Sun PLA+. Plus. Wow, it's like the perfect temperature on that print. Yeah, wow. To give you an example, here's the blue one. Look how much flex is in that one compared to. I mean, it's flexing, but way stronger. Um. All right. Another thing I've heard is that if you have a bimetal, you should get direct extrusion. So it shouldn't make any difference. It's just going to throw off your retraction. Um, and you're definitely not going to want to slow down your retraction. But if you have a long tube, you're going to have more retraction. You're going to have whatever slop. There's slop inside here where your filament is taking up the space inside the tube, especially in the turns. And uh, then you can have slop in your connectors. But all that has to be added to whatever your regular retraction is. So if mine's 2.5, if I had a big long bound tube, I would say I would be, I'd be in the sixes probably, just like normal, you know. Um, to give you an example, when I had my micro Swiss on a Bowden tube, the retraction was about 4.2, amazingly, right? Oh. <clears throat> The reason why I say that is because that is like, if you have a regular Creality hot end on direct drive, it's about 4.2, um, usually. So, 
the difference between the all metal versus the old the regular the Bowden tube hot end uh, the one with the Bowden tube in the inside the difference was approximately 2.3 millimeters in retraction so I would say if I'm 2.5 right now I would add 2.3 if I put this on a Bowden tube so matter of fact that's what I'm gonna recommend so 4.5 if you're on a Bowden tube to start out hopefully I did that math right I guess that's the end of the video um, it's a magic bullet for these printers if there ever was one as far as the regular case if you wrap it and you have the regular fan cover I don't see why it's not gonna work it should work perfect um, another rule is uh, don't put one of those uh, silent so-called silent fans that run about half the amperage through them you never want to drop your amps on a fan because that's your static that's what's fighting your static. You drop your amps and you lose your ass. So, all right, everybody, good luck.